1400 full hour uh, we don't have a lot of time because after this talk we have the general assembly and um, the general assembly uh, of the eps is always a, a bit boring because we have this like a huge agenda to do so the more time we have for that the more boring stuff we get to do <laughs> the better um, right but this talk is different this talk is about how we actually run the event <clears throat> And uh, it's focusing on next year. So basically, I'm just going to tell you a bit how uh, we work, what we do, how the work groups work, how you can help if you want to help. So uh, first about the, the EPS and basically how everything came to be. Um, EPS is the organization that's running EuroPython. And, and this year, for the first time, actually, we are, we are actually running everything. So we're doing the ticket sales. We're doing the sponsor ship uh, sales so everything runs through the EPS and that has been a bit uh, like a bumpy ride this year this is also the reason why we had the ticket sales start rather late but we managed and you can see these conferences working so um, this worked out and next year we, we have learned and we will do better and uh, probably start earlier so the EPS was founded in 2004 in, in, in Göteborg in Sweden <clears throat> Uh, initially, it just managed the, the EuroPython lo location selection, did not actually do the organization. The organization was done by local teams. Then in uh, 2014, we uh, then switched to a different uh, setup, or after 2014, we switched to a different setup. We uh, started this work group concept, and we decided to build everything in a way that we can all work remotely, which uh, greatly improves things and makes things more stable because uh, unlike with the switches that we had before from one location to the next where the on-site team was then also the local team and we had a complete switch of teams uh, between locations there's next to no loss of institutional knowledge so we all know how things work we don't have to teach uh, the complete team every single time and it's much easier that way so what does the EPS do? Um, it, it runs the EuroPython uh, conference. It provides uh, support for the Euro Python, European Python community, and it protects the trademarks. Um, we work using work groups. So what we do is we have basically split the tasks that you need to do for a conference into work groups. So, for example, we have a sponsor work group, we have a communications work group, one for administration, one for doing financial aid, one for doing the program. Um, I'm going to have a long list later on. We uh, also intended to use this model to take away the financial risk from the local teams. Um, Basically, what happens now is that the EPS has the full risk, so there are no local teams anymore. <clears throat> All we need to do is we need to find a local accountant, which we're going to start earlier this, uh, for the next one, uh, to deal with the taxes, because uh, we had a huge issues. We started looking for accountants in January, and then we found one eventually, I think in March it was, and then we started the process of registering for VAT, and it took until June until we actually got the number which is kind of strange because we want to pay taxes, right? So it's not like someone wants money from someone, someone is, uh, or we want money from someone. So it's kind of strange, yes. So how does the EPS work? We have a board, we have work group member, uh, work groups, we have members, of course. Um, the board members are typically also very much involved in the work groups. Uh, usually they're chairs of work groups. Uh, the work group members don't have to be EPS members, but of course we'd like them to be EPS members. It's very easy to become an EPS member. You just apply and then we uh, have to vote you in to actually become EPS members. And all the EuroPython attendees have uh, the possibility to become your uh, EPS member. And also um, we have opened up this to basically everyone in Europe. So... <clears throat> How did uh, EuroPython develop? It started in 2002. We started with 250 attendees, a uh, very small number in Charleroi. Uh, but we did have all the, the, like, we had Guido there, we had lots of core developers there, so it was a really, really nice lineup. And then over the years, we grew, we grew, 
uh, we started to hit 1,000. We went a bit above 1,000. And then for some reason at 1,100, you can see here, it kind of stopped, which is okay because this is a nice size, right? So we're not like a company that always wants to grow endlessly. And so I think this is, this is perfect. So um, I drew up this, this slide here with an ideal timeline. So this is how we think it should work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, uh, in reality, it doesn't work like that. So, yeah. So we, we have an RFP process. RFP, I don't know if you know, is kind of like it's a commercial process. When you when you try to procure something, you ask vendors to send in uh, proposals or bids for whatever you want from them. In this case, we want a conference center. We want a caterer, and. Um, uh, we want to run a conference there, and so we go to the conference venues and the caterers and then ask them for, for bids. Uh, this we've done for this year for the first time. It went extremely well, so we're going to do it again. Uh, then, of course, you, you once you know where you'll probably be going, a few locations, then you start contacting local teams because we don't want to step on anyone's toes. We don't want to have conflicts with local uh, Python conferences. And... Um, then we go ahead and do all the setup. So we need to do the website, we need to set up all the tickets, and then get the tax, taxes working, of course. Uh, start the ticket sales, try to publish the schedule a bit early. This year we were really late with the schedule. And of course then in, in July we usually have the conference. So how, how does the, the work group structure work? Uh, we have usually have one chair per, per work group sometimes two chairs. The program work group, I think, has two chairs. So it's Alexander, he's not here, and uh, Alex. Um, and then, of course, you have work group members. Sometimes we do voting. We don't do much voting. So it's basically just like hands up on the, on the Telegram uh, group. So and then you, you just say yes or no, and then that's it. Decision is made. Uh, if no one speaks up, then the chair decides. So it's that simple. What was that? Um, we do have a problem with inactive work group members. So sometimes people uh, sign up, maybe do one or two things, and then basically drop off the face of the earth. And uh, we, in the past, we left them in the work groups. What we do now is rather soon we just uh, kick them from the work groups because we don't want the situation to happen that they appear later on on the list of the teams uh, because it basically makes it look like there are lots and lots of members in that work group. We don't need extra help, so um, it's, it's basically a wrong impression that we generate. And we also don't want the people who actually do work to um, basically be put off by having people on that list who don't do work. So these are the work groups. Uh, we have, uh, I have two pages here for work groups. So we have an administration work group for basically doing the contracts, do, making sure that the work members are signed up. We have a finance one, which is, should be obvious, manages finances. Sponsors is re responsible for managing all the sponsors. So if you want to help with that, for example, you have to do lots and lots of emails. Sylvia will know, you can ask her. <laughs> She has been doing a lot of that uh, for this year. Then we have communications. We need more help with that. Communications is about public communication. So writing blog posts, tweets, monitoring all the channels, and so on. Uh, support is for helping the attendees. So managing, Jill did that. Um, for helping the, the attendees on the help desk. Uh, for basically making sure that here on site, attendees are helped with, and we organize everything that has to do with attendees. We have a financial aid work group, which does the whole financial aid process. So we have a budget, and then they, have a, they do a call, and then they have a selection process in place, have to decide who gets what, and then they also have to manage how the actual refunding works for the financial aid. Um, then we have a marketing and design group, uh, which is in charge of basically managing all the designs. What we've done in the past is we tried to do this ourselves. It didn't work, so we got a designer. So now we have a good designer, and she does most of the design work for us. And then we basically just make sure that uh, everything gets ordered correctly. 
um, from various vendors that we have now identified, so it's, it's a lot easier than before. Uh, we have a program work group which is in charge of all the scheduling, all the talks, does all the uh, talk, the speaker interaction. Uh, this is also a lot of work, it's similar to the sponsors, but a little different. So speakers always have special requests and they come back to you with lots and lots of questions. We have a web work group, which uh, Arthur was mostly doing this year. So uh, this is about managing the website, improving it, adding new features and so on. Uh, we have an on-site team, which are basically just people that happen to be in the location where we run the conference and they would like to help us. Uh, we don't have a lot of people in there. Uh, same case again, lots of people sign up but not really many do anything. So we had, uh, where's Doug? Dago? He's not here. He was mainly helping us with that and Mark Smith, he's not here either. Um, plus a few others. Then we have a media team <clears throat> media team currently is uh, just O'Year, <laughs> and he's not here, uh, and he couldn't attend the conference. So essentially, the media team is in charge of managing all the video recording and all these things. So basically, I did this this year uh, to make sure that everything works. And then we have Code of Conduct work group, which is a special work group because it has a different setup. You cannot apply for this. We have to basically select the people and... Um, uh, we always have two women and two men in that group so that uh, we, we can cover everything and, um, and it works well. Right, so that's it uh, for the work groups. The way we work together is uh, mostly by mailing lists. Some, well, actually a lot of decisions are made on the Telegram groups as well because it's, yeah, it's fun, it's much faster, it's uh, not so much email to read. We use uh, Google Docs a lot, spreadsheets and so on management. We have a wiki, but it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, unfortunately, the wiki provider shut down a couple of months ago, so um, basically the wiki is offline now. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that wiki. We, we need to get it running, up and running again somehow. Uh, something that's important to know, if you're chairing a work group, you're actually responsible for what's happening in that work group. So if something if your work group members don't deliver, then uh, we beat you on the head because you have to deliver. So essentially, the, because when you run a conference, there are fixed deadlines. It's just a matter of fact. So we cannot extend those deadlines and then someone has to do the work. And um, if you're sharing one of these, then so that you know what you're getting into. So any questions? We have. Minus 17 seconds left. <laughs> if you want to sign up, you go to the website. Um, let me just quickly go to the website. Over here, your Python Society, and then you say work group. Okay, so let me see. Let's try it like this, maybe. Uh, where's the not? Ah, that's good. Excellent. Uh, so you go here, your Python work groups. You click on it. Something should happen, provided the Wi Fi works. Yes. Uh, and then it, it has some explanations of what the various work groups do in more detail than what I just uh, mentioned. The setup, everything, and then down here, you down here you enter your, your details. I don't know why it says obligatoire, but anyway, you, you, you get you get the idea, right? So you <laughs> yes. Um, so you, you select the work groups that you want to sign up for. You prov provide a bit of detail about uh, how much work you can you can input. This is weird, autre, it's French as well. Um, and then you, you write here some some uh, motivation and so on, so that we know what you actually want to do, how much you want to contribute. And then uh, this goes to a spreadsheet, and then every now and then we have a look at that spreadsheet, and then we contact you and sign you up. So that's how it works. Good. Thank you. So now the boring part.
the General Assembly. You can stay, of course. One more question. Ah, one more question. Um, how do you get the uh, ideas for the different locations? Ah, uh, OK. The, the, the way that it works is, it is by this RFP process. So what you do is you, well, we have a list of locations that we, we a list of venues that we contact. Um, where we, we explicitly send the RFP to, and we, but we also want to, this year, we also want to do it in a more public way so that venues can actually uh, come to the website and then just ask for the material and then we send it and then they can enter a bid as well. So if, if, you, have, if, if you would like to see the conference in your, in your city or in your country, then uh, it would be great if you could just send us an email with possible venue uh, details, the venue locations. So we as we need at least a venue that can hold like 1,400 people. They have to have a caterer. They have to be uh, available in July. Um, and it, it's we we also look at things like, for example, connectivity. Whether the city is easy to reach by plane. Whether it's affordable. Um, we prefer to do things in places which are also like have like a touristic kind of um, uh, touch to it because it makes it more interesting for people to come. So those are the the the, the criteria that we have, and of course costs, right? So some places are just extremely expensive; we cannot afford. Right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So.